And then we've got Pat Smith at lock, Jeff Foster and Dave Edwards in the second row. So a former Tiger teaming with a former Magpie in the country second row. Dave Stafford and Bob Everson. Everson is a very interesting player. There are a lot of people tipping him to come to Sydney on quite a hefty contract. And the hooker is Jamie Jones. The side has made some changes from Sunday's team. But uh, that's not new with 79, Jack Gibson. If somebody's not giving him the effort that he requires, they sit on the bench or they play in reserve grade. The team is Grant Jones at fullback for tonight, Jim Swift and Terry Fay on the wings, John Byrne and Gary Knight in the centre, Drito and Millen forming the halves. McGregor comes into the top grade at lock. He'll tackle all night. The second row is a very impressive one. Don Pryor and Nathan Gibbs. Watch Gibbs. He's a, a footballer that really is going well in 79. Peter Tunks will take the field in the first uh, quarter, Jack Gibson just told me, in place of Fred Pagano, and he'll partner Peter Reed and Steve Magnus. Sydney running left to right in the first half of the uh, match with South Sydney. Referee for tonight's game is Gary Cook. And he blows time on as uh, South Sydney's fullback Grant Jones well downfield. And it's uh, Greg Guider, the country fullback, that is tackled on the 22. Everson taking it up about three metres out from the 22 line. That's his prop forward partner, Dave Stafford, playing it now. Out to Griffith, the halfback. Stafford again. And it's uh, Pat Smith there. Block forward and captain electing to kick and he's found touch too with a good kick from Smith in the opening minute of play. And he's going to put a scrum down about 30 metres away from the South Sydney line. I think that'll be country's tactics in this opening 20 minutes, Frank, is to attempt to play the game down in South Sydney's territory. And uh, in the game on Saturday against the City, Pat Smith uh, figured in some tremendous uh, line kicks, didn't he? He's got a very yes. powerful boot. He reads the reads game very well, too. Uh, okay. Did you notice then how the country backs were lined out? Yes, well, um, they didn't get much possession on uh, Saturday. And obviously they'll be hoping for a little bit more because I think there is a little bit of flair in their back lane. It'll be interesting to see if Michael gets any opportunities tonight. Right. So it's Guider now. Comes from Tamworth City playing the ball. This is Barnett from Warrielda. He's been here before and has played for uh, Country First before Jeff Foster came down in the Country Second side from Griffith in 1971 as a centre and then had quite a good career with Western Suburbs prior to going back to Griffith. Walden endeavouring to make the break for the countryside. But they're going to find the South Sydney defence, I would think, quite frustrating. And obviously Phil Jackson has uh, told them that if they're going to breach it, probably the kick over the top, such as you just saw from Pat, uh, Pat Smith, could be the quickest way of doing it. That penalty is, uh, in fact, interfering with Smith after kicking the ball through. And you would have seen clearly that he was uh, knocked over as he was chasing the short kick through. Tonight's match, of course, brings us to the end of the first round of the Round Robin series. And at half time, we'll be reviewing the four groups and the points table at this stage of the 79 Cup. Each of the four groups is made up of four teams. And each group supplies one semi-final qualifier, with those finals being played in August of this year. McMillan turning on the inside as... Uh, South Sydney get their second touch of the ball and the penalty goes to South inside the five against the uh, countryside. You had a good chance to have a look at them on Saturday, yeah, Frank. Who are you tipping? Hard to say, mate. Right? <laughs> it's a toss of the coin job, isn't <laughs> yes, it? Yes, it is. Certainly, uh, it's a far cry from the city side, of course. There's no Graham Meady or Steve Rogers out there this evening, and I wouldn't be surprised to see country upset South Sydney this evening. Well, Terry Fay has gained some 20 metres for his side with two runs. McMillan, the South Sydney captain, tackled. Play on the scoreboard side. Out to Nathan Gibbs, back to Don Pryor. Pryor is taken high by Foster, and down lower by the uh, country halfback. And so South Sydney, 15 metres out on the last tackle. McMillan 
looking for the opening. Turning and back on the inside to Squad Rito, and he's tackled about 10 metres out. So another scrum is to go down, very close to the New South Wales country line. Fine bit of attacking play by South there. Smith to play it, standing out of his pack. Stafford. Newcastle North representative. Newcastle with quite a uh, fair supply of the country squad this year. David Edwards playing with his left thigh and knee both heavily bandaged, a former Balmain player. John Penno, a member of the Illawarra side that went uh, so well last year and he has played for country of course before 1979. Smith again with the little kick over the top and Nathan Gibbs having a little bit of trouble up eventually tackled by the kicker. Jim Swift midway between the 22 and the halfway on the country end of the field. I think I'd sooner seen him use the long kick in these early stages Frank. Yes. Um He's tried that little kick twice now, and uh, the result he achieved with his first long kick was far uh, more acceptable than what he's turned up with the short one. John Byrne, very dangerous player, and uh, well tackled, but he's got his pass away, and uh, South Sydney have gone within a couple of metres of scoring as Gary Knight plays the ball. Terry Fay will be hard to hold out. They've got him up. He might have got it down. Referee Cook is going to put the scrum down indicating that Terry Fay was held up in goal. Five metre scrum, the new rule in this year of rugby league. South's looking fairly sharp uh, yeah, this stage. Yeah, slipped the ball very cleverly then, didn't he? Mm. It was a good tackle by the country fullback wide, was yeah. So South win the scrum and it's out to squad Rito and that's uh, Jones stepping neatly and going to within about a metre of the line. The South playing it back to the blonde-headed centre, John Byrne, scooped away, out to McMillan, and uh, McMillan must be very close. Gary Cook has a close look and gives the three-pointer. A trial Sydney captain, Bob McMillan, lead by 3-0 after six minutes of time gone. So there's the uh, try coming up for you with McMillan. And uh, it's all him, really, as he breaks the New South Wales country defence and scores under the uprights. Here's the head-on shot of uh, Bobby McMillan scoring the first try of the match to take South Sydney to their 3-0 lead. Country's defence would want to be better uh, for the remainder of the game than it's been in the last five minutes, Keith, otherwise there'll be a cricket score here. Yes, well, they certainly had them under sixes and sevens from the time that Pat Smith put that little short kick over and South mm. Sydney had possession in an attacking situation. But I give Johnny Byrne a lot of the credit there because he was the one that uh, promoted the initial break, didn't he, with that yes. clever pass. Mm. And uh, certainly, as you said, they didn't recover very quickly and it mm. was no surprise when McMillan did go over under the posts. So Grant Jones converting the try scored by Bob McMillan and South Sydney lead after seven minutes of time gone by five points to nil. Restart by Smith, the lock forward. Down to Terry Fay. Tackled by Stafford. Nathan Gibbs. Quite a talented player, Nathan Gibbs. A medical student at the moment. McMillan, Squadrito, torpedoing towards that touchline. It's taking a turn, but Guider, the fullback for country, bringing it up. Taken by Knight and Byrne. Pino. Play just on the 22 line. Foster. Centre three-quarter for country. Owen Wallace playing it with Smith. But pulled down by Tunks. Everson getting his kick in. 
interesting story surrounding Everson. He started out in rugby union in the same side at Blakehurst as St George's Robert Stone. He takes a giant run up on the flank and still going, oh. but eventually pulled down by the fullback Guider. But a long 40 metre sustained burst by Fay, putting South on the attack. And Nathan Gibbs is felled eventually by Foster and by Stafford. But South looking as though they could cross again. Burn, he's over. John Byrne scoring again for South <coughs> under the uprights. And South's already lead by eight points to nil after nine minutes of football. In fact, when this is converted, as Byrne, you see, forces his way over to score, with the conversion, they'll be scoring great than the, uh, the timepiece can keep up. Byrne coming at you head on on the Amco replay through some rather brittle country defence. Yes, well, when I tipped uh, South Sydney a couple of minutes ago, I wasn't prepared for 10 points in the opening 10 minutes. Uh, I was critical of Pat Smith for using that little chip over the top, and then, of course, I thought the tactics were correct when Everson attempted to clear his lane with a long one. But I give uh, South's fullback Green Jones a lot of credit for instigating that try. He uh, positioned Terry Fay for that long searching run down the touchline. And Fay really uh, scarped along down there, Frank, didn't he? Yes, Good exactly. tackle by the fullback, but uh, then, of course, the country defence was nowhere to be seen. And uh, top, parks, top yeah. marks to South because they've opened with two great tries. I thought it a, a move earlier, too. I thought Nathan Gibbs held on a little bit too long. He may have let the ball go. So again, we find Souths taking play back inside New South Wales country half through Peter Tunks. McMillan, Nathan Gibbs. Picked up by Jones, the uh, country hooker. And the penalty for South being inside the five. Bob McMillan makes a lot of difference to this South Sydney side. He's a big... Great schemer. Clears the ball quickly from the rucks mm. too, doesn't he? Mm. Reads the game well and dictates the trend. Come on, Tungies, the so the tap will be taken by New South Wales country about five metres into South Sydney's territory as Griffith makes the run around and then to Foster. Griffith again. Stafford. He's done some tackling in the early part. Stafford, he is one of the exceptions to what has been a very ordinary defensive pattern from New South Wales country in the opening minutes. Walden, the 5'8". Getting his pass away very well to Ashley Barnett, then to Penno, but Penno put into touch by Rod McGregor's tackle. Join There'll be a double header of cup matches. A 5.30 kickoff between Auckland and Canterbury. And at 7.30, St George and current cup holders, Eastern Suburbs. The Amco Shield fixture next Wednesday between Erin High and James Cook High will kick off at 3 o'clock. The 8.30 p.m. telecast for next Wednesday will be between St George and Eastern Suburbs. And that match will then be followed on television by the replay of the Auckland-Canterbury-Bankstown fixture. The Amco Shield will then be held over until the Saturday morning. So it's a real feast of Amco Cup football here next Wednesday at Leichhardt with a 3 o'clock kickoff for the Shield, then 5.30 Auckland versus Canterbury and 7.30 St George versus East. And you'll see the two top grade matches on television from 8.30 onwards next Wednesday night. In fact, uh, four hours it is, four hours of big Amco Cup football. Burn to dummy half. Tunks. Proving a handful for country tunks. He's made a couple of very big runs. South leading 10-0. Four minutes from quarter time. Squadrito. Magnus. South Wales country care coming up with the ball after a, an ordinary pass from Peter Reid. And making the break for them, the halfback Griffith tackled midway between the 22 and the halfway. Foster unloading to Guider, then on to Barnett, to Wallace. He drops it. And it went forward, and so referee Cook 
putting the scrum down. Nine metres on countryside of halfway. I dare say that uh, all Channel 10 viewers, O10 network viewers, have now heard the very exciting news from where we see it that uh, the network has been granted the exclusive rights by the Australian Rugby League for the international series between Australia and Great Britain. We'll have, of course, the three test matches plus New South Wales versus Great Britain plus combined Brisbane versus Great Britain and uh, the Queensland match against the visiting side. Six really top international matches coming up for you on the O10 network during the Tour of Australia by Great Britain. Guider, he's made a couple of good runs for the countryside. Yes, he has, but he lacked support on that occasion, didn't he? And yes. uh, the country boys had plenty of it, opportunity to back him up. Obviously, they felt that he was going to be tackled at any, uh, any given time, but that's a fault in their play at the moment. Yes, they gave up on him, for sure. Everson getting his pass away, picked up on the bounce by Edwards. He was tackled by Macmillan. Played just outside the 22. Dummy half is Wallace. Through Griffith, that's gone on to Foster, who comes from Griffith. Smith taken by Peter Reed. He came across. In fact, I think he he was in fact a South Sydney junior. He went to East and then came back to South Sydney. Dropped by Foster. And referee Cook is giving the the penalty for offside. Correct ruling. And so a shot for goal to be taken by Grant Jones, who tonight is doing the goal kicking, not Terry Fay. I was watching Terry Fay closely on Sunday with his goal kicking. He knows really only one thing, and that's get in there and give it a real big kick and hope. <laughs> yes, he's had a, a great deal of success, though, hasn't he, since thrown into the position. And uh, I remember back to the game against Cronulla out at uh, Endeavour Field when right from the kickoff he kicked that great goal from halfway. And uh, he has kicked some good goals for South Sydney. You'd be happy about that. Uh, those test matches, Keith? Yes, it's great, isn't it? Uh, the Great Britain side, of course, um, always send a top touring team to Australia. And uh, this year won't be any exception. But um, I suppose, Frank, that you're reasonably confident. Confident of what, Keith? Well, confident of Australia taking out the series after such a successful kangaroo tour. <coughs> Yes, well, I don't think it's going to be easy. I think that um, the English side will have the, have the benefit of being the touring side, and they'll be eating, sleeping, and uh, and uh, playing football almost daily, and they'll blend together into a nice combination. I think. So Grant Jones kicks the penalty, and at quarter time, South Sydney lead New South Wales country by 12 points to nil. Jones to restart. Two tries to South in the first quarter, one by McMillan, one by Byrne, and Jones has kicked the three goals. Fullback Guider giving it immediately to David Michael, a player that uh, press reports today indicate has a chance of coming to play in Sydney with uh, some good performances in the Amco Cup. Stafford now on the 22. That uh, makes me remind those people who thought the country areas were being done a disservice with the restructured cup that these players that appeared on Saturday in beaten sides with the advent of the new look Amco Cup have got at least three more opportunities to impress the selectors whether they be uh, New South Wales selectors or Australia. They can't afford he was standing much too flat and the South Sydney players picked it of course and moved up very quickly and I think he was uh, hurried into that situation. So Country winning the scrum and Penno running dangerously close to that touchline. Foster. Well Phil Jackson is listening to me now. Phil uh, what did you exactly say to them at quarter time? Well, I don't tell you what I really said to them, but the, the message was that they're, uh, they're not doing anything right. They're not taking the man with the ball. Uh, they're not uh, running onto the ball. There's no venom in the tackles. Uh, in general, they're very lethargic. They have to zip themselves up, and uh, it's going to be a cricket score if they don't. 
Well, Phil, I certainly hope it isn't going to be, but we did make the comment here that they seem to start better in defence on Saturday than they have tonight. That's quite right too, yes. I'm hoping for better, better things this quarter, of course. OK, Phil, I'll let you concentrate on your players. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks, Ray. So it's South Sydney with the ball, 20 metres on the New South Wales countryside of halfway as Jones looks for the touchline, taken by fullback Guider. West, of course, recorded their victory over Balmain in a first-round match, and one of these teams, come the end of July, will qualify for a semi-final position. As I stated earlier, we will at half-time uh, have a look at the four groups and see just how the situation stands as we complete the first round tonight. McMillan for South, playing it back to McGregor. On to Squadrito. This is John Byrne. Flick pass on the inside to ground, but uh, it went backwards, and this player is Jim Swift. McMillan. Peter Reid. Squadrito. Torpedo punt high down to Guider. He's getting plenty of work, Guider. He's coming out of it with distinction, though, because he's handled a couple of those high ones uh, very well. Certainly not under any pressure on that occasion. He's only a little fella, Frank, isn't he? Yes, he is. I think that if he gets a little bit of daylight in the tack, too, he'd be hard to hold. A little bit of pace. Edwards turning it back to Foster, but then Edwards uh, had no... <laughs> didn't have much option, did he? He gave the pass and yeah. straight back to him. Quite involuntary, that. Fairly well done up, Dave Edwards, isn't he? Certainly carrying some bandages. Jones is going to take the kick for goal, it seems. He has indicated to his captain, Bob McMillan, that he thinks he can reach it, but McMillan has overruled him and said to kick for touch. And it is a good kick, too, that finds touch about 12 metres out from the country try line. Another try here could easily break the hearts of uh, the country visitors. McMillan across the field and then to Nathan Gibbs. It's worked perfectly for them. Oh, how easy. Try scored by Nathan Gibbs. <laughs> A set move with uh, McMillan and Pryor from the tap running across the field together and then one player runs as a foil in the opposite direction and then Nathan Gibbs running with him in the opposite direction is in to score. You'll probably see it better. Uh, okay, here it is now. That's the final part of it uh, on the head-on shot. It was really a move where two players ran towards each other. Um, two sets of two players running towards each other. And Nathan Gibbs going into score, making it 15 points to nil with eight minutes of the second quarter remaining. I suppose it'd be nice to think that all moves could be so perfectly executed with that result, Frank. Yes, I just opened up, didn't I? To point to there, Keith, I thought that was a great bit of captaincy by McMillan. He, he declined to take the kick at goal. I had 12 points on the board, and I think he wanted to keep the pressure on, and uh, here he is with the prospect of further five points. It's been a change here to South too. Yes, they've lost their hooker, Steve Magnus, as the goal is kicked by Grant Jones. So points of eight on. Well, that was Walden, the 5-8, that gave that good pass down to Rick Griffith, and now it's with Smith on the last tackle. Looks for the support, finds Edwards. A pass across the face of and to the ground in front of Prest. He's still got the ball for them. Uh, New South Wales country appeared to hesitate as if to say, are we still able to play on, sir? Referee Gary Cook said yes, and it's down to oh, Ashley right. Barnett. A good ball to Walden. Walden gets his pass away to Terry Quinn. On it goes to David Michael. He gets it down. It's a try. Yes. It's a good try. Yes, it was a good try. Starting off in rather sloppy circumstances, but finishing very well with uh, David Michael. Very clever pass here from uh, Barnett, the centre. Wasn't it? Across mm. to Walden. Yep. He did well. This is Walden here inside the 22, away from Terry Fay, a one-hander to Terry Quinn. He doesn't mess about. And it's on to David Michael. I had a few doubts as they went down here. Um, no, no doubts, were they? 
Well, not so much off that shot, Keith. You couldn't no, really sorry. tell. Maybe this shot will uh, indicate what I was talking about a bit more clearly as we see it on the Amco head-on. Starting off from nothing, really. Good uh, pass over the top by Barnett to Walden, wasn't it? It was a top pass. So he's did created that thing. try, you would imagine. This fellow's played well in patches, Keith. Uh, uh, Keith Barnes? Yes, he has. Walden, I was a little, little critical that he got across the field a little bit too much on occasions. Well, there it is. Yes, he got it down, but only... Only just. Only just. He got underneath the South Sydney fullback, didn't he? So, Pat Smith's attempted oh, conversion. It? it is just Ooh. off. Just <coughs> off. But it would have been interesting how do you kick that. 17. Try in a goal. Could uh, really open the game up, can't yes, it? Yes, certainly can. So, there's the siren sounding and referee Cook calling time off. For the three-quarter time recess, it's... Seven. Losing it backwards, referee Cook says play on, and he does that. It's out with Foster, given immediately to Walden, on to Barnett, and he's tackled outside the 22 by South Sydney's Trevor Barnes. And the penalty goes to New South Wales country. And a chance here for the two points if they want to take it. No, I don't think he'll take it in this situation, no. Uh, I think he'll be looking for the try. No, he is going to take it. Well, I don't want to start this off again. No, no, we won't. Because I remember <laughs> you and Frank Hyde took about 10 minutes to discuss it last time. <laughs> That's right. I think uh, Frank was of the opinion that he might as well grab the two while they were there. You were suggesting maybe the kick for line, Keith, but... Um, no, I think it was reversed, but... Oh, was um, it? Oh, yep. gee, don't start it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. Uh, the situation, of course, is that if he is able to kick this goal, uh, South Sydney kick off and I think they'll get it down in country's territory and then they have the job of getting it back up here. So Pat Smith it is the goal kicker. Quite right, Smith taking the goal kicks. Keith, I asked Phil Jackson would Guider be taking them and he said yes. But uh, such isn't the case. The captain has put himself on and he's kicked this one, a nice kick. And so it's 17 points to 10 now with uh, 18 and a half minutes of time remaining. New South Wales country have come back from 17-0 to 17-10 in 21 and a half minutes. It's been a big comeback, Frank, hasn't it? Yes, the way they started off this quarter too, Keith, it indicates that they're not uh, going to give this in lightly. They think they've got a chance. So the restart to be taken by Grant Jones for South Sydney, and this match has really come alive as far as a contest is concerned. The halfback, uh, well, I beg your pardon, the fullback guy that played the ball then. And Terry Quinn, now based in Newcastle, plays it. Over to Griffith. Floats one out to Barnett. Taken by John Byrne, effectively. Byrne playing, or played on Sunday in the centres, and again tonight in the centres. I was pleased to see that with John Byrne. I personally think he's wasted out on the wing. It's quite a good centre, John Byrne. Guider now to play it. Tackled by Bampton, a good tackle by Darrell. A cross out to uh, Walden, the 5'8", who's done some uh, good work for the countryside on occasions. He hasn't let up, but that's a big thing in his favour. This is uh, Prest, the uh, replacement forward who came on at half-time for Bob Everson. And uh, he made quite an auspicious entry into Amco Cup football with uh, two cautions in five minutes, but he certainly did inject a bit of life into the... Uh, the country forwards. Penalty to South. Terry Fay back in the fullback spot. With uh, Grant Jones up on the wing in place of Jim Swift. So the tap for South to be taken by Grant Jones. Given to Barnes, back to Jones. Pagano's the dummy half. Out to McMillan. A one-handed pass back to Trevor Barnes, and he's put to the ground nine metres out from the line. Playing it back to Fred Pagano. And uh, he's tackled a couple of metres out. Regarded as a tackling machine as Pagano. Squadrito. Back to Fay coming onto it at full speed ahead and he scores from the fullback position. Well, that's the reason they had him back there. Obviously. <coughs> oh, that might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. 
Squadrito waited for Faye, and then he gave him a perfect ball. He barged through Ashley Barnett, who's not a small man, and uh, this huge man, Terry Faye. Watch him coming at you head on and then put yourself in the position of Ashley Barnett or anybody else that has a, a frontal tackle to make on this man. Travelling at this speed, I mean. Barnett went high. The uh, blocking tackle, I think, as Frank Stanton called it, at the Daily Mirror Kentucky Fried Chicken Coaching Clinics. And then he's in to score. I don't know what sort of a tackle you'd have to apply to him, Frank, really. <laughs> I think no, you've got to get him... Get him in a conventional manner around the legs, at least try and stop his momentum yes. and hope well somebody else can come and help you. <laughs> Either that or hit him over the head with a blacksmith's anvil <laughs> or something. So the try converted and South Sydney lead by 22 points to 10. Jones, by the way, Grant Jones has kicked five out of seven for South Sydney. Jack uh, Gibson describes Terry Fay as the toughest man in rugby league. Number 16 for them is Anthony Whelan, who comes from Wagga. Faye, by the way, in the south lineup is at fullback. Knight is on the wing. Barnes in the centre. And Jones on the wing. So their three quarter line has undergone quite a dramatic change. Rod McGregor. 22 to 10. Bampton. I think that's probably quite effectively snuffed out the uh, country's. Attempted comeback, Frank. Yes, I think so. Uh, Drake, there's only uh, 12 minutes to go now. And Jones, they the don't look as keen as they were early in the quarter, do they? No. Smith. This place kept trying all day. More you look at this match. Uh, with hindsight, um, one gets the, well, I get the distinct impression that they've come out thinking to themselves, well, this side isn't going to be as hard as the one we met on Saturday, and they've gone out there with a touch of complacency for the first uh, half of the match. Well, certainly it looked like that, because there was no, they didn't apply themselves anywhere near the way they did on Saturday, and yet I know in the dressing room prior to the game, Phil Jackson was emphasising the importance of the clash and uh, emphasising the importance of getting settled into their game and, uh, and making sure that they did gain the initiative right from the kickoff. But, uh, of course, when they got out onto the field, it was an, an entirely different attitude that they adopted, and they paid the penalty. Interesting to note uh, that a lot of these New South Wales country players journeyed back to their hometowns on Sunday to play in club matches. So if you think they haven't played since Saturday, they did most of them on Sunday with a couple of ex... So it's uh, Jamie Jones, and this is uh, Michael Prest, country getting their final replacement uh, ready to come on. <coughs> Tony Price, isn't it? Yes. Price, number 15 on the sidelines, warming up as country fritter away possession, and it's South Sydney with it, and it's Peter Reid taking it up before running into David Edwards and Pat Smith. And Price is from Port Macquarie, and he's one of the, I think, the only country player that didn't appear in the games on the weekend. Rito getting it out of his own half, looking for the touchline too. And Guider is back there. I think he probably give, could have given it to Penno yes. on that occasion. Yes. He positioned him well and uh, attempted to sell the wing of the dummy. He's had a good game, Guider, though. Oh, yes, he's got a lot of potential, hasn't he? Griffith, Smith, Terry Quinn. Walden. He's strong 5'8", this fellow. Gives the impression he's taking a lot of uh, pulling down. Smith now. Again, Griffith floating a ball over to David Michael, the wing three-quarter. And 
he's forced to play it just outside the 22 from Terry Quinn over to David Edwards and then on to Michael Prest and uh, he's going to play it again outside the 22 back to Jamie Jones then to uh, Stafford stands up and gives it back to Prest and he's met by Bampton loses the ball dived on by Topper played and it's gone to Pagano swung back in the other direction to Bobby McMillan the impression McMillan there that he actually pulled his mouth guard out as he went clutched at something in the mouth and uh, then went ahead but highly unlikely Squadrito to play it Bampton <coughs> taken by David Edwards Jones Guider getting across after it. Beating Knight. Taken by Fay. Terry Quinn. Four man South Sydney tackle. I'm just looking at the line up here and I'm trying to work out who's playing fullback for South at this time. It's Terry Fay's out here on the left wing and Jones is over on the right. Pressed again. John Burns actually over in the white ring. James is... I don't know whether Terry Fay's forgot that he's in the full back spot. <laughs> no, no, Jones is getting across there now. <laughs> back to Pressed again. Well, if that is the case, it's smart coaching by uh, Jack Gibson, of course, yeah. because obviously he put Faye into that position just specifically for that particular play. The move, yeah. Mm. And yet, I still don't know where Jones is going, do you? Yeah. <laughs> now it's with Edwards. There'll probably be some ploy where they share half the field. Yeah, but who's looking after the middle? <laughs> <laughs> Macmillan. <laughs> <laughs> Rod McGregor to play it. A few metres out from his quarter line. We've got eight minutes of time remaining. John Byrne might have been lucky he ducked under that one. And I think Mr Press might have been lucky at the same time that uh, he did because it would have been, I'm almost certain, caution number three. And that could have meant an early shower. Jones. A touch of cramp. Rodrigo getting his kick high into the air, coming down to Guider. So Takes it kick. very well. What a safe game he's had, this fellow. And a hell of a work rate. He's been peppered with up and unders and driving torpedoes all night, but he's gone through with uh, a clean slate. Smith, Penno. Well, that's strange. Penno's come from the left wing to add the extra man or to run off the first forward up. And yet this man, David Michael, that we've heard so much about and who we've seen run once tonight, was about 60 metres closer to the action and didn't uh, figure in it. And anyway, here's Griffith making the break. There's a chance here. Big Stafford as he got the pace. Little Topper's coming at him. Got his pass away and they've bummed a certain try. That was going to be a certain try. Terry Quinn unable to take the pass from Stafford. Yeah, look from here, the Stafford was just going to see it out, didn't yes. it? Uh, the defence conversion him very quickly, but uh, just running through the South Sydney side, it looks as if they've only got 12 men out there, eh? Yes, they have. There's only 12 there, Keith, that's for sure. That's why Faye's... We're looking at Faye on the wing and yeah. Jones, of course, on the other one. Of course, they underwent a, a radical change, didn't they, where they had a few yeah. players coming off and uh, going on. But it's definitely only 12 men there. Well, it's a very vacant South Sydney bench, if that's what you mean. There's just nobody left. Guida, or is it Griffith? Griffith, I beg your pardon. Inside the 22 and put into touch. A good tackle by Bobby McMillan. They're very much alike in stature, aren't they, those yeah. two, Guida and Griffith? And uh, they run very similar as well. And they both had top games. Pressed caution again. 
McGregor, held by Walden. Quadrito back to Barnes now with Reed and the players on the South Sydney 22. Squadrito. Playing it back to Pagano. Jones getting his kick in. Penalty. A penalty has been awarded to Souths, with Jones being felled after he got his kick in. Touch judge is coming in to make a report, and uh, unless I'm sadly mistaken, the man that actually got Jones was again Michael Prest, who uh, must certainly be running out of chances. Yes, well, I think the uh, linesman indicated to, uh, to Cook that there was a little bit of a forearm there, but... Uh, Cook was obviously on the spot, saw the situation, um, saw the incident and uh, felt that the penalty was sufficient. Um. Uh, Jim Swift, the South Sydney winger who uh, had to leave the field, uh, is being taken by ambulance to hospital uh, with a suspected fracture of uh, the rib area. It's out to Bampton, onto Squadrito, now to Burn. South playing with 12 men, having used up their four replacements. Leading by 22 points to 10, the Rabbitohs, Macmillan, out to Knight. And so this scrum is to go down a few metres on the countryside of the halfway. Two minutes from full time. And the South Sydney side get the penalty. Next Saturday, of course, uh, in our telecast match at 6 o'clock through to 7.30 with 90 minutes of rugby league. The whole Saturday game, you'll see the match between Newtown and Canterbury from Henson Park. And that should be a match well worth watching, I would think, when you think about the number of players that Newtown uh, poached, I suppose is the word, away from Canterbury. It could be quite, uh, quite an interesting game. And then on Sunday, some more top rugby league in and around Sydney, but highlighted, I feel, undoubtedly by the Balmain Parramatta clash at Cumberland Oval. I'll stack them in there, I would think. Well, I think you'll be there and I'll be there. Peter Reid now, tackled just inside the 22. <laughs> and we've agreed not to sit together. I'm going to see Manly on Sunday, as a matter of fact. It's out now to South Sydney's Trevor Barnes. Tackled 18 metres out. Change camps. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't changed hats, though. The squad retail high ball and the big men fly it's down to South Sydney's John Byrne he's been chased by Griffith and he gets the ball down one handed and referee Gary Cook awards a three pointer to John Byrne he was entitled to three points for effort if for nothing else here's the replay as this bomb comes down they all go up and uh, as in Australian rules, the little rover gets the ball, you might say, and Byrne it is that darts away to that corner, chased by Griffith the half. They have a bit of a wrestle there before Byrne gets it down one-handed. And uh, South Sydney lead by 25 points to 10, and this is how it looked from the head on. I think it's probably uh, indicative of country's performance when you have a look at the player that gets across the field to, to cover yeah. Byrne. It was quite incredible if you watch that closely. <laughs> that a New South Wales again, yeah. country player actually got the ball and gave it to a South Sydney player. <laughs> so John Byrne on camera, the try scorer, and that is the fifth try for South. 25 to 10, and this man Grant Jones is going for his sixth goal.
given a good goal kicking display this fellow even those he's missed have been somewhere near the mark it's got length but it's just offline and so 25 to 10 is the final score and the man of the match is South half and captain Bobby McMillan Bob McMillan is the South half and captain and uh, He's the man of the match, taking out the prize from Electronic Sales and Rentals and uh, National Panasonic. And that, of course, is the video uh, cassette recorder, which we'll be telling you about in just a few moments' time. Having played uh, their one game are on two points, then Western Suburbs and New South Wales Country after two games are each on two points, and Balmain, with one game down, have yet to score. But briefly... Balmain can't afford a loss in this match tonight.